Is it just me, or has this sorcerer been slithering a lot more? Here's a look at the new Mattel Master Universe Origins Snake Armor Skeletor. The dreaded Snake Men have arisen from the darkest depths of Snake Mountain. King Hiss and his repulsive reptiles have vowed to destroy He-Man as heroic warriors, as well as Sun Man and the rulers of the Sun. Will Eternia fall to the slithering swarm? Trading in his flails for scales before we get a closer look at the brand new Snake Armor Skeletor. Let's grab the old tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. And don't worry, I'll bring in a couple of figures also for comparisons. Skeletor is going to be a little bit taller just because he's also got the helmet on top of his head. This gives us then a figure that's about 6 inches in height. Or Snake Armor Skeletor is 15 centimeters tall. Wow, we're also on the topic of snakes. Are we on the topic of snakes? Yes, we are. On the topic of snakes let's bring in snake armor he-man figure we just recently had a look at and while they are yeah sharing the same body to one another you can see with the headdress that skeletor has over his head that kind of makes him a little look a little like serpentor does make him for a little bit higher of a figure here's also what he looks like like we did also with he-man here's what he looks like with the 2000x series skeletor What's rather interesting about these two is that neither one of these would have had this design way back in the 80s, but they're based on the 2000X series design cartoon and the subsequent figures that would follow. I was going to say that this is the first time I actually got in this comic entitled Assassin's Aim until I realized that I had already looked at Tongue Lashor, one of the four figures advertised here on the back along with the Snake Armor Skeletor that we're about to look at, the Hypno I've yet to pick up, and the Roboto I really have little to no interest to pick up. This Roboto, by the way, with the orange armor, is actually based on the way that he was originally designed in the mini-comic. Little again, no interest. I already have a proper colored Roboto. What am I talking about? I'm probably still going to pick it up. I'm going to pick it up if I find it on the cheap. I'm still going to want to pick up Hypno, though. Uh, advertised on the inside of Assassin's Aim, you get some really nice looking artwork. Once again, some dialogue boxes and bubbles to at least tell us exactly what's going on. Snake Armor Skeletor seems to be making short work of Tongue Lashor's tongue. Saying apparently, ka-chunk. Is that the sound that I guess it, I guess it would be the sound of cutting a snake's tongue. I've never really cut a snake's tongue and put my ear really low down to it to see if it actually says ka-chunk. Well, not the snake, the sound of my sword. Anyways, though, flipping through this, there's also, again, some little references where they mention Evil Lynn, or they show Evil Lynn, and they also show Merman. So it's not always just the advertisement of the characters for that specific comic wave. Sometimes also they throw in some older characters as well. And there's the Orange Roboto. What am I talking about? I'm still going to probably try to pick that one up. But again, a nice looking comic. I'm going to put that to the side. Along with that, something I'm not going to actually keep is a little pamphlet included here. This pamphlet, once again, is just to show you, it's just the way it's been assembled, guys. That's all it is. It's been plugged and pegged in place, and the Mattel is just thinking they're being witty about all of this. Ooh, clever. We put a little pamphlet inside. We can tell you that you can mix and match these parts. Seriously, who's mixing and matching these parts? Somebody's probably even putting in the comment section, well, actually, I like to make custom figures by mixing and matching the parts. Okay, there's you. I'm going to put that to the side. Then the figure comes included with a couple of series of weapons. This weapon is kind of really weird. It's a snake blade. I think, in fact, the actual name of it is, I'm just looking at here, the fanged blade. I want to make sure I got the name right. I don't know if I would say necessarily it looks like a fang. It looks actually more like a tongue with some serrated edges here to the side. It has some questionable shapes, kind of looks a little droopy like a heart there. And there's again, like little uh, studded kind of texturing that they've added to it. The bottom of it, unfortunately though, while just looking more like a guitar at the top of it is very hollow. Again, I don't really know how we would necessarily use this if this is something like a fanged blade, which is apparently the name of it on the back of the packaging, I don't even know how he would use this. Would he just swing forward or we would assume that this is sharp? Or would he just like sort of hit someone over the head with it? And they would say, ow, stop hitting me with that. This only does plug in on one side of the figure's body because this hand right now is the actual, uh, just the more relaxed hand. But this hand at least will hold then the shield. Which I think looks less like it belongs to Skeletor. It looks more like it belongs to Megatron. <laughs> it looks like, like the Decepticon logo. Of course, then added a skull here on the front. And some additional cool detailings added in there as well. I think the original vintage toy, and I, even by saying vintage, I actually mean more the 2000X series uh, Snake Armor Skeletor. I think, in fact, came included with a shield like this. There was also the Master of Master Universe Cla uh, Cla Classics. I'm having a tough time spitting that out. It must be my snake tongue getting clobbered by a sword. 
Uh, the Matty Collector Master Universe Classics Snake Armor Skeletor, I believe, also had this type of shield. Totally looks like it belongs to Megatron, though. We're going to go ahead and clip this also onto his arm. That's completing the rest of my tasks. Putting all the weapons onto his hands. Of course, this one then drops onto the floor. Let's just retrieve it. Bear with me. Bear with me. There we go. I guess I probably didn't have it hard enough. Grip, grip, gripped on hard enough to... There we go. On Skeletor's arms. That's what the figure looks like with everything armored on the figure. Looks fine. I mean, again, I have to kind of question how this is even just a, a sword. What was it getting? I keep forgetting the blade. Fang blade. Remove those for right now. Let's put those to the side and getting a closer look now at Snake Armor Skeletor. You know, again, overlooking the fact that he does look a little bit bearing a resemblance to Serpentor. I guess he's okay. I mean, the thing about it really is that this figure was never intended to be a vintage figure anyways. It's based on a design of a 2000X series Skeletor where they had a little bit more mileage to make these guys look a little bit more creative. By sort of giving him a kind of a blockier shape, like what we're getting here with Snake Armor Skeletor, it sort of does lose a little bit of the appeal that would have been the Snake Armor Skeletor when we first got that 2000X release. The 2000X would have had a little bit more definition in the face, and I think even like the helmet would have been a little bit more further forward. Being that they've molded everything so close together, not only does it make his face look really squished, but it loses a lot of the appeal that the Snake Armor helmet would have had. Uh, also, one thing I did want to draw your attention to as well, just to slide this guy over, bring over the 2000X series Skeletor. Why is he lacking so much paint? I say a lot, but I mean, really, when you look at the way they handled the paint for the 2000X series Skeletor, where they've transitioned some really nice dark green on the outside area, they've even put in panel lining for where his mouth would actually open up. They don't do any of that, unfortunately, with this version of Skeletor, and we are to assume that this is supposed to be the exact same design character. One thing that actually does get removed here on this Skeletor is obviously the armor he's known to have. Instead, what they've done is they've replaced it with this snake armor face. Uh, you can't detach it really if you wanted to, and basically all you would just get underneath it is just a standard Mass Universe Origins body. So I'm just going to put that back in place. The helmet is not removable. It's permanently attached and molded to the rest of his face. Uh, they have, unfortunately, though, while looking at the cloth, the loincloth seems to be exactly the same. But unfortunately, they did leave off a little bit of extra red. It was here present on the original one that we looked at. It's unfortunately, while still sculpted, it's not painted here on the newer release. So I feel like, again, like they could have just jazzed it up by just adding a little... I, I'm only expressing concerns for tiny little dots of red, so take that with a grain of salt. But again, like I like the head sculpt, but I just think it, it loses a little bit of the charm that the Snake Armor Skeletor not only had in the 2000X release figure, but also then the follow-up Matty Collector uh, Master Universe Classics Snake Armor Skeletor. All the rest of the body is pretty much just the same as the same Skeletor we looked at earlier, short of just, again, the fact that they removed the armor, and again, they retooled a brand new head sculpt. All the rest of the figure's body is exactly the same. For the figure's articulation, it's going to be about the same. You don't feel like there's anything really necessarily limited, even when you rotate the head back and forth. It's hitting the shoulders, yes, but it still allows the head to rotate technically all the way around anyways if you wanted to. Head does look up. And I guess there is the one little bit of limitations because, of course, the back of the helmet sticks far enough down. It's fairly soft plastic, but sticks far enough down that it does limit a little bit of the articulation when it comes to the head moving up. But you can move the head down if you want to have a sad looking Skeletor. Why am I ripping off Serpentor's design? As for his arms, though, standard Motu uh, or Origins articulation. So, again, his arms do come out at 90 degrees. You can take those arms and rotate them all the way around. All the way around, again, you're just going to be hitting the shoulders, unfortunately, in the process. He has no bicep swivel, once again, but he does have at least a swivel in the elbow. Allows also the form to hinge back and forth. And the hands also rotate all the way around, providing the arm doesn't go along with it. Hands rotate all the way around. You can also hinge them back and forth as well. Standard swivel only in the waist, but that comes with the territory. The legs do those split out. You can take those legs and move them forward and move them back. There's a mild swivel at the top. You can hinge only single at the knee. Rotate the lower leg. You can also rotate this, but it's actually just the way it's been attached. I mean, technically, you could remove the boot if you wanted to mix and match. And here I go talking about mixing and matching. But I guess if you wanted to make an updated Skeletor, you could technically use the lower legs and probably would be able to switch the feet out as well. Speaking of feet, though, well, he doesn't necessarily have the monster feet. What they've done instead is they just molded like their monster feet, but they kept them the more lighter blue plastic, assuming that he's walking around without shoes. You ankle rock these also back and forth. And the figure does have, even though he doesn't come included with the display stand, peg holes on the undersides of his feet. 
when initially I was picking these up online, I sort of already knew what I was going to be getting because I saw obviously images of these guys online. I'm just going to put this guy right over here and bring in Snake Armor He-Man. And well, again, I did already know what I was going to be getting into when I was picking up both of these online, paying a little bit more, a little bit more than had I been able to find these guys locally in retail. I got to say, like, the Snake Armor He-Man, I think, was the one I was less interested to get of the two figures, but the one I'm actually more happier with now that I actually have them physically in hand. Skeletor does look good from the armor standpoint, but I feel like it's lacking a little bit something in the head department. Not only is it missing the paint that would have actually made the 2000X Skeletor stand out over the 2000X He-Man, but I feel also with the helmet being so close to his face, it makes not only his face look very occupied and sculpt, but also takes a little bit of the charm away from the snake armor helmet that he wore in the original 2000X figure. With snake tongue weapon in one hand and apparently Megatron shield in the other, Skeletor in his snake armor is ready for battle. This is a figure that I don't think is going to appeal to all the collectors out there that are collecting the Motu stuff. This, I think, falls into the category space of either the diehard collectors or the completionist. I'm using the bunny ears in the background. I fall into the category space, the collection category of completionist, where even though I'm not as interested about that specific figure, I still find myself picking it up, even though in the review I did say I wasn't going to be getting myself the orange robot, or who am I kidding? If I do see him on the cheap, and that's the important thing, on the cheap, I'm probably still going to be picking up the figure because I fall into the category of completionist. Casual collectors may pass on Battle Skeletor here. I want to say Battle Armor Skeletor, Snake Armor Skeletor, simply just because he doesn't look like Skeletor. He looks enough like Skeletor, but the very obvious Serpentor-inspired designs that he has for his armor here, I think will detract a lot of the casual collectors who may, if anything, source out the 2000X series Skeletor. While it doesn't look like the original one from the 80s, it looks at least like Skeletor. The same necessarily can't be said for this one right here. I, I like the look of it, but I feel it sort of does sacrifice some of the things that were making the, the original figure cool by having to make it in the confined space and design of what the Motu Origins figures were doing. By making this more vintage, it sort of does lose again a lot of the appeal and a lot of the charm that made that original Skeletor snake armor from the 2000X series such a cool looking figure. I wish I still had that figure. I had it once in part of my collection. I sold off all, literally just sold off all of my 2000X stuff and I really did regret that. Even though those figures were very limited on articulation, they actually were a lot less articulated than the stuff we're getting here from the, the Master Universe Orange stuff. To the credit, they actually are nice designed figures. They look more better as statues with very, very limited articulation. A lot of times I think it was usually like five points, even six points of articulation. I think there might have been a waist also in there as well. But those figures were really cool, and I really wish I still had those as part of my collection. Either way, though, what do you guys think of Snake Armor Skeletor? Is this one you would consider to pick up, or is this one that you would probably pass on in favor of one that looks a little bit more like Skeletor? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also, as well, if you enjoyed this video, why not throw it a like? And also, as well, if you're enjoying the content you guys are seeing, and certainly on board to see more Mass Universe stuff, then make sure if you haven't already done so that you hit that subscribe button down below and that you also move on over and turn on the bell notification to ensure any new videos that pop up here on this channel. I did that with my mouth. Any new videos that are popping up onto this channel, you are going to be getting those notifications via YouTube and you're not going to be the one that says, wait, this guy had a new video? And you're going to be saying that while all the other people are like, yeah, I just totally watched it. Don't be the person that says, I didn't totally watch it. Be the person that says, I totally watched it. Anyways, we're going to have a lot more videos. I think I messed that up. Either way, either way, we're going to have a lot more videos coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.